Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Tribunal Regarding Terran Confederacy War Crimes The room Admiral Lawrence Smith stood in was not a small one by any means. Considering the sheer number of delegates it had to hold each day, that was hardly surprising. She stared out from a seat at the array of species seated in the Galactic Senate, her eyes drifting down from the just inducted and considerably slimy tecton at the far fringes, to the scintillating feathered quit, and finally resting on the delegate sitting closest to the central platform that she was seated on. That row was comprised of the Galactic High Tribunal, a collection of five species that acted as supreme judges regarding interspecies issues. They were the Hengal, who had been humanity's first contact and sponsor into the UGCS, who knew apes and four-armed crocodile-jackal hybrids would get along so well. The Karolth were next in line, carefully preening one of its six wings with sharp beak. The Tilth representative looked rather disturbed to be next in line, considering the problem he is species, things that look like a ferret with too many eyes in weird places, had with avian predators on their homeworld. That was hardly surprising. Lauren was just impressed that he hadn't tried to cocoon himself yet, which put him ahead of the Glow representative, who'd retracted almost fully into its chitin save for one of its heads. The last two had her pursing her lips. The frillless weren't a problem. They got along rather well with the humans, though both hoped neither species ever found out exactly why. When aliens resemble your favorite pets, it can get, uh, awkward. No, it was what she was discussing, and with who. She tapped the translator, masquerading as an earring, deciding to listen in for a bit. Cannot continue this line of conversation if you insist on these vague threats. Deific expletive. You are accusing a member of a species of serious war crimes and... A tentacled cross between a gator and a chump monk interrupted her. And so my leaders simply want it known that if justice is not served, it will weaken the ties between our people. Negotiations regarding colony rights are strained as it is. Surely you don't wish to exacerbate such. But that was more than enough. She was tired of this idiocy. Besides, her communicator had just beeped in a particular pattern. Admiral Lauren stood, and the assembled aliens quieted. Not out of respect, though. I am sure some of you are wondering why you can only hear me now. One of your cyber specialists decided my little speech here was more important than your squabbles. So shut up, sit down, and listen. She snapped her fingers, and a hollow field appeared behind her, a rotating will on it. She continued, We were assembled today to discuss several matters, but those concerning me and my people are what we are accused of. We have been accused of several crimes under galactic law, including violation of Talvril trade accords, breaking galactic warfare doctrine, and assorted general war crimes. She glanced at the datapad on her desk and snorted. The first two counts I can honestly dismiss out of hand. We weren't even using ballistic weapons when the travel accords were written for one, and the charge you've labeled us with is ludicrous. We stopped trade with the Morag during war times, and you accuse us of using deadly conflict to enrich private interests. We haven't even stopped trade with the Togal, and they're the Morag's closest allies. Our lawyers are actually enjoying this one. You cannot honestly say refusing to trade with someone that we're at war at fits this criteria. She looked up and raised an eyebrow. And really, you have the galaxy-wide doctrine of warfare you expect all species to adhere to. That is without a doubt the stupidest thing that I have heard in the past cycle. 
She shook her head and continued in a mournful tone. I dismiss our breaking the Galactic Warfare Doctrine for two reasons. One, because we never knowingly signed it. It was hidden as a rider within the 97th Trade Agreement that was pushed as a requirement for our joining the Greater United Galactic Civilizations. And we likely would have rewritten it entirely if we'd spotted it. Further, the rider was hidden after the fact, since we went over all of those with a fine tooth comb and it was not there when we signed it. The second, it just is laughable. Honestly, some of our best military advisors almost hurt themselves laughing at it. Parts of it are admirable, certainly. We would never knowingly target a civilian outpost or condone war slavery of any kind. But all the war crimes you listed are our use of stealth, of hit and run guerrilla tactics, and our use of ship disabling technology. She looked up with an almost pained expression. Gentlemen, women, and neuters. The Terran Confederacy is outgunned three to one by the Morag, and they had better tech bigger ships and, frankly, would steamroll us if we kept up your doctrine. She raised an eyebrow. Honestly, it seems the only reason the Morag have as many military victories as they do is the strange notion you all have that warfare must be honorable. Stand up slugging matches between two armies. She glanced at a data pair, and something happened to harden the lines in her face. Oh, the last war crime. Extensive civilian casualties. I do notice that only the Terran Confederacy has been charged with this. The loss of so many innocents in this war is truly saddening. 23,000 Morag civilians. She glanced back at the hollow screen for a moment. This was New Avalon. It was a garden world, to us at least. Total population 3.2 billion. Total civilian population 3.01 billion. It was not a military outpost. The image behind her changed. She stared out over the amassed crowd of aliens with cold eyes as several ships edged into view before they went black. What you just saw were Morag battlecruisers. More of them. Her voice was calm controlled, and almost robotic in a lack of motion. They glassed the planet. It took them two weeks. The view snapped back on, this time on the surface, a small city. Something flashed in the sky. The more savvy of those watching knew it to be a kinetic harpoon. And there were visible shockwaves. Half of the city was obliterated instantly, and whatever was watching the city tumbled from the air into the remains. The image flickered, showing people streaming from their homes as a pillar of fire lanced from the sky, searing everything at its path into charred nothing. Dust and ash kicked up, obscured the camera until it was consumed. The image flickered again, showing a room full of injured humans of all ages. A wave of silver crept up to cover the window before the wall dissolved, allowing a flood of metallic grey in that slowly liquefied everything before it froze into a solid mass of metal. The images continued, more cities destroyed, bombing communities burnt, individuals choking on ash and dust. Admiral Lauren leaned against the desk, glaring at the assembled judges and jury with eyes of burning steel. The Morag burned one of our civilian garden worlds, and they didn't even have the decency to do it quickly, she said in that same level tone. The Terran military has killed fewer Morag civilians during the entire war than the Morag did in this one attack, and we have dutifully reported every single one, as outlined in your doctrine, as outlined by basic common transparency. And I will remind you that over two-thirds of those were from a single colony drop that is still under investigation. She jabbed her finger back at the screen. And yet I hear nothing of the Morag's crimes. This is one of three. Three garden worlds that were burned, and five that they have targeted. They make claims of faulty information regarding military installations, but a five-minute scan would have revealed what these worlds are. She slapped her hand against the table and glared pointedly at the Morag sitting in the left of the tribunal. 
The Mirag are one of the most advanced races in the Senate, with the single largest empire. And they get away with this, she said flatly. You accuse the Terran military of war crimes for what? Hit and run tactics, guerrilla ambushes, cyber warfare against enemy ships. She smiled and let out a noise that the translators flagged as humorous outburst. But most present found it very threatening. You accuse us of war crimes for using tactics that let us win against an enemy with better tech, bigger ships, and a bigger army. Honestly, I think you lot are just mad we're showing you up by kicking their ass. She stood upright again. We do not enter a plea for any of the charges against us. The first is ludicrous to ascertain. The second should not be legally binding in any case. And the last is, frankly, just proof that this council is either deeply corrupt or simply terrified of the Morog's military might. She paused and bared her teeth in a feral grin. And judging by the Morog delegate's expression, if I can read her antenna correctly, she knows that the war is over anyway. She turned and snapped her fingers again. The hollow field flickered and showed a scene of surprisingly bloodless carnage. A palace of some kind had a wall blown in, with a line of Morog cowering under the guns of two dozen Terran marines. Only one didn't have a gun pressed to the head, and it stared directly at the communicator. This is the Morag Empire High Council. We wish to begin negotiations for peace with the Terran Confederacy immediately. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.